hello and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing a video that i look forward to doing and that is my most anticipated 2020 releases this is going to be covering about the first half of 2020 and then i'll be doing another one at the halfway mark of the year for everything that's coming out in the last half of 2020 because a lot of the stuff that is coming out in the fall really hasn't been announced yet or there's not that many details so i'd rather wait to talk about those books then i've also decided when putting together this list most of the books that were catching my eye were fantasy books so i'm pretty much going to keep this exclusively fantasy releases just because consistency so i love 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 reading through all the books that are coming out and all of the new books that are going to be hitting shelves to see what i can get my hands on in the upcoming year and i really think that there are a lot of strong really cool sounding books coming out in the first half of 2020 starting off the new decade in ya nice and strong think about where ya was 10 years ago in 2010 and it just seemed like it was a completely different landscape i'm really really looking forward to all of these releases and getting my hands on them and reading the beautiful stories that they contain so with that being said i'm going to be going in release date order going through each month through to june so the first big release date is january 7th when the book coming out on that day is a heart so fierce and broken by bridget kemner which is the sequel to a curse so dark and lonely i read this book back in like april march time last year and when i went to book con i actually got my hands on an advanced readers copy and i'm so excited about this because i loved this book i think it was just everything that i wanted in a sequel and i'm so excited for everyone else to be able to read it and experience how great of a book this is in a curse so dark and lonely harper is a girl living in modern day washington dc where she has to deal with constantly being underestimated because of her cerebral palsy as well as other familial problems when one day she is kidnapped and transported back to the magical land of Emberfall. In Emberfall, Prince Ren is cursed to repeat the autumn of his 18th year over and over again until he can get a girl to fall in love with him and every autumn he slowly turns into a monster. So this is a modern retelling of Beauty and the Beast. The only person in the castle with Ren is his guard Grey which, who is entrusted to bring girls back to the castle to fall in love with Ren which is where Grey comes into the story because he is the one that transports Harper from Washington DC to the land of Emberfall. In the follow-up sequel this story actually focuses more on Grey whereas the first story focus more on Ren and Harper. In A Heart So Fierce and Broken we are following Grey's adventures as he is now fleeing from the castle as he sets out into the kingdom following the events of the end of A Curse So Dark and Lonely. The other perspective that we get in this story is Leah Mara who is the daughter of Karis Loran who was one of the main villains in the first novel. Leah Mara sees a lot of flaws with her mother's violent methods and she was passed over to be the heir in favor of her sister and has a lot of issues dealing with the fact that she was not chosen to rule and when Grey and Liamara cross paths they must concoct a plan to save both kingdoms involved. Yeah that one was really good. I have my thoughts on that in my one of my wrap-ups I will link up above down below you know the deal. The next book coming out in January that is a fantasy release that I'm really looking forward to is The Nameless Queen by Rebecca McLaughlin and this one is again coming out on January 7th. The Nameless Queen is set in a world where there is a hierarchy system and if you are nameless you are a peasant and you are not even allowed a name. However, a tattoo will appear on the arm of the next ruler to signify that they are meant to rule. When the tattoo appears on the arm of a nameless girl, she must make a name for herself and take the throne or die trying. This one just sounds really cool and it is a standalone fantasy, which I feel like a lot of times there aren't as many standalone fantasies, so I'm always looking forward to a YA standalone fantasy release. And for the last January release I want to talk about, we have Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera, which comes out January 14th. Infinity Sun is set in an alternate New York where there are are people called spellwalkers that are vigilantes band together to capture the specters and specters are evil creatures that steal magic from people. Brighton has always idolized the spellwalkers and wants to become one of them. However, his brother Emil just wants the cycle of non-stop violence to end. When a brawl one day reveals that Emil has hidden powers, he is thrust into the 
spotlight to become the heroic spellwalker that his brother always wished he could become. And I know a lot of people are really looking forward to this because Adam Silvera is a very big LGBTQ plus writer and this will be his first fantasy novel. Moving on to February, there are so many releases that I'm looking forward to in February. Crazy. The first one coming out is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace, which comes out on February 4th. When I read the description of this book, I knew that I had to read it and I am actually on the street team for All the Stars and Teeth and that has just been a really fun experience. Amora is the princess of island nation Vizadia and as she is the next ruler, she must train to become the High Annie Master, otherwise known as the Master of Souls. While others can choose their magic, Amora has had no choice since she is the heir. However, when a demonstration of her powers goes awry, she is forced to flee. From there, she makes a deal with a mysterious pirate named Bastion. If he helps to restore her good name, she will help bring back the magic that was stolen from him. However, as they set scale across kingdoms, darker forces arise and threaten everything that they know and love. This one just sounds so cool. It's like this very unique magic system mixed with pirates. I love a good pirate story, so I'm really looking forward to this one. Next on February 4th, we have The Queen's Assassin by Melissa de la Cruz, and Penguin team was kind enough to send an arc to me for this one, and I do plan on picking this book up next, actually, so I can have my review out before it is released. Calden Holt is the Queendom's deadliest weapon. He is the personal assassin to the Queen and bound to her by magic while he hunts for the Dian Scrolls, which are an ancient text that contains the secrets of the whole magical history of the kingdom. Shadow of the Honey Glade has been training her whole life to join the Guild of Assassins and hopes that one day she can become an assassin as revered and feared as Cal. When a surprise attack brings Cal and Shadow together, they must team up as assassin and apprentice to hunt down a dark new threat to their kingdom. This one just sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Like I always love a good assassin story with some star-crossed lovers. Next on February 4th is the King's Crow by Libba Bray and this is the finale of the Diviner series which I just absolutely adore the diviners. I've listened to all of them on audio, so I think I'll probably pick this one up on audio because the narrator, January Lavoie, just does such a fantastic job of narrating these characters. The diviners consists of the diviners, Lair of Dreams, Before the Devil Breaks You, which is the only copy that I own, and of course the last one will be King of Crows, which is the one that is coming out. The diviners takes place in 1920s New York following Evie O'Neill, who lives in Ohio with her parents and just wants to get out of there. She is a thoroughly modern girl, and when a scandal causes her parents to send her packing to New York to live with her uncle, she cannot be more thrilled. Her uncle is a professor of the occult and as such is drawn into some pretty mysterious cases. Set in 1926 New York, the city is full of jazz, speakeasies, and dangerous evil, as well as dark secrets. However, Evie has a dark secret of her own. When a girl is brutally murdered and Evie's Uncle Will is drawn into the case. Evie uses her gifts to dive headfirst into the seemingly occult murders. I mean, this description just scratches the surface of what this series is. There are so many different characters and it tackles so many really big issues, especially in the 1920s, and it is just brilliant. Libra Bray is a fantastic writer and I highly, highly recommend that you all check out the series because it's so good and I cannot wait to see where it is going because this finale has been building and building and like, it's just phenomenal. The next book I'm looking forward to in February is The Stars We Steal by Alexa Dawn, and this one is again on February 4th, and this is basically described as The Bachelor set in space, which just sounds like a really, really fun time. Princess Leo is heir to a dilapidated European spaceship, and she must select a bachelor to help save her family from financial ruin. However, when Leo's childhood friend and love once deemed unsuitable for marriage, comes back to court as the bachelor of the season. Leo must do what she can to recapture his heart. Leo must navigate lies, games, and secrets in order to find the lucky man that will be her husband. It just sounds like a really, really fun time. Again, another February 4th release that seems to be, I think the first Tuesday of every month seems to be like the most popular day for book releases just based on what I've seen, but the next book coming out February 4th is Ember Queen by Laura Sebastian, which is the final book in the Ash Princess series, which consists of Ash Princess, Lady Smoke, and now Ember Queen. In Ash Princess, 
We have Theodosia, who was six when her mother, the Fire Queen, was brutally murdered and the Kaiser took over her kingdom. Theo is kept hostage by the new regime and is thus deemed as the Ash Princess. She is forced to do unspeakable things for the new ruler. Theo must use her smarts to outmaneuver the Kaiser and win back her throne. And I have had this book forever. I haven't read it yet, but I am looking forward to it because I really love a book full of a lot of smart political maneuvering and I've heard really good things about this series and hopefully I can just get the last book and read straight through which is one of my favorite things to do with fantasy series. Next up on my list is Heart of Flames by Nikki Prahl Prado which is a sequel to Crown of Feathers. I got this book in an owl crate last year and I just love the purple sprayed edges. I think it is so pretty and owl crate does have a matching exclusive edition that they put up on their website. I think I don't know the exact details on that but if you are interested in more details you can just send me a message and i'll find out for you um but yes okay so crown of feathers is set in a world that has phoenix riding which is really cool two sisters ripped the kingdom apart and dismantled the kingdom of the phoenix riders 16 years later veronica is a war orphan that dreams of becoming a phoenix rider she has a really fraught relationship with her sister and after a shocking betrayal she decides to set out and join the legendary phoenix riders in order to do that she must disguise herself as a boy and join their ranks just as she beginning to feel at home her sister shows up and exposes the web of lies that will upset everything that she has ever known and meanwhile the new empire has learned of the phoenix riders return and plans to end them once and for all i love stories about fraught sisterly relationships and as well as phoenixes are such majestic beings i think this one will be really a good read and i'm looking forward to the sequel as well and next up is a sequel of another book that i got in a book box and that is the sequel to circle of shadows by evelyn sky which is the cloak of night and i love these purple edges they're just so pretty sora and her gemini daemon are apprentice warriors in the society of tagus which are the most deadly assassins in the kingdom however their kingdom has been at peace for many years and there are not many opportunities to prove themselves so when sora and daemon find a rogue band of soldiers they jump on the chance to infiltrate their ranks and try and prove themselves worthy of belonging to the society as a full ranked members and i got this really cool print with this book and I just think it's so pretty that you guys deserve to see it so you can picture the characters for yourself because that's the thing with me and fan art is I really like to see prints and stuff like that so that I get a good idea of what a character looks like in my head because I'm horrible at thinking up faces. <laughs> Heart of Feathers and Cloak of Night both come out on February 11th. The next book coming out on February 11th is The Night Spinner by Addie Thorley. And this is actually a retelling of The Hunchback of Notre Dame set in a frozen tundra, which is really unique. And I haven't ever seen a retelling of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, even though I do. And even though I do love retellings, this one just seems really cool, especially because I am not even that familiar with the original story because I didn't watch the movie that much when I was a kid. Anibis was once a great warrior known as a night spinner who could wield the <clears throat> threads of darkness together. However, when she lost control of her powers, she was banished to the tundra. When her sister comes back and offers her an opportunity to have her banishment revoked if she hunts down a rebel, she jumps on the case. However, when she learns that the tides of war has changed and the charismatic rebel leader is actually stealing supplies to feed starving shepherds, Anibish is caught between her pride and her sense of morality. And last up in February releases, coming out on February 25th, is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I am so, so looking forward to this book. I have an arc. Thank you so much to Firewell and Friends for sending it my way. Like, once I knew that this came out and that there were arcs, like, I immediately emailed the publisher and asked for an arc because, like, I love Trisha Levenseller. She's an autobi author for me. I've read all of her books so far. The summary for The Shadows Between Us also just sounds so cool. <laughs> Alessandra is tired of being overlooked, but she has a plan. One, woo the Shadow King. Two, marry him. Three, kill him and take his kingdom for herself. I mean, I think that's all I have to say because I was instantly hooked when I read that. I'm like, oh my God. And along with Trisha Levenseller always has like the best romances in her stories. Like I, the witty banter is just always amazing. And the fact that now we have Alessandra who's trying to kill the king. Like I just think 
it's going to be great and I've heard it described as like a beautiful Slytherin romance. I mean, that's all you have to say to get me to read this book. I'm going to be reading this one soon so I can have my review up before it goes up. I have been actually waiting until closer to this book's release to read it, but like it's time and I cannot, cannot wait. The next big date in book releases that I have to talk about is March 3rd. There is a lot going on on March 3rd. So I'm going to start off with the books of my two queens and that is Sarah J Maas and Cassandra Clare. Like I love them both so much. It's going to be really interesting to see who picks to read Cassandra Clare's book first versus read Sarah J Maas's book first. Um, <laughs> it's just going to be a big day in the booktube community. So in order to be fair to my queens, I will talk about them in alphabetical order. These first two. So we're going to start with Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, which is just another book in the Shadowhunters series, which consists of like, it's going to be the fifth series within the Shadowhunter world because we have the Mortal Instruments, the Infernal Devices, the Dark Artifices, and the Eldest Curses, which is like the Dark uh, Red Worlds of Magic series. So, so if you know me, the Infernal Devices is one of my favorite, favorite favorite series ever like i love tessa gray as a character i just really relate to her she is the best so when i heard that cassandra claire was writing another series following the children of those characters i could not be more excited and when the cover dropped i like screamed <laughs> because look at it this is a teaser that i got at bookcom but like this is just one of the most beautiful covers and i love the like seafoam aqua teal ish cover it really offsets the red of cordelia's hair very well so yeah i've really really been anticipating this book and it was supposed to come out in november and the date got moved which like what can you do about it i am here to support cassandra claire and i knew that she moved it for health issues so that she would be able to tour when this book comes out so hopefully she comes to boston so i can come and see her so what is chain of gold about james and lucy harrendell have had a pretty idyllic childhood growing up in the london institute with their parents the harrendells however when the blackstorns and carstairs move to london so does a remorseless and inescapable plague james harrendell longs for love and thinks he's found it in the enigmatic Grace of Blackthorn. Cordelia Carstairs longs to be a hero and save her family from ruin while also keeping her love for James hidden. James, Cordelia, and their friends are plunged into an adventure where they will uncover some dark secrets that will reveal dark magic. I mean, I just love everything Shadowhunters. I'm so excited. But then we have House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. So excited this is the first sarah j mass book that we are going to get since kingdom of ash right yeah so we had the akotar novella and then kingdom of ash and then we didn't get any books from sarah j mass in 2019 so i'm so excited for this one and it's an adult series i'm really excited to see what sarah j mass does in the actual like concrete adult genre because as you all know akotar very much skimmed the line between young adult and adult even though it was marketed as young adult so now that she's fully in the the adult genre i'm really really looking forward to what this book will contain and it just seems like it's gonna be great bryce quinlan had a perfect life she would work all day party all night but when a demon murders her best friend bryce is left bereft and alone the accused demon is behind bars but the crimes start again and so bryce takes it upon herself to hunt down this demon and i'm pretty sure that bryce is half fae Hunter Athlar is a fallen angel and as such is enslaved to the Archangel's will. With a demon wrecking havoc on the city, he is offered a chance to pair up with Bryce and hunt down this evil creature in order to win his freedom back. And I just know it's going to be way more involved than what the summary is telling us. Like, Stardew Mass books are always like that and I think it's going to be full of a lot of like a witty banter between the two main characters, which is something I always look forward to in my Stardew Mass books. So like, yes, these two books are coming out the same day. It's going to be a lot. <laughs> However, that is not all for March 3rd. There are still a ton of other books coming out that day that I'm looking forward to. Next is Havenfall by Sarah Holland, who is the author of Everless and Evermore. Deep in the Colorado mountains, the inn at Havenfall is the neutral ground between four powerful magic 
world. Maddie Morrow spends every summer at this inn and hopes to inherit it from her uncle one day. However, one summer when the impossible happens and a dead body shows up at the inn, breaking everything that it stands for, Maddie must untangle the secrets of the inn and find out just who is responsible for the murder. And this is, seems like it's a very cool like contemporary fantasy twist. So it's like set in the modern world, but with a lot of other worlds, so it's really cool. Next up on March 3rd is The Vanishing Deep by Astrid Schulte, who is a really cool author. That kind of her style is taking mysteries and setting them in fantasy worlds, which is just a really cool mix of genres. She's also the author of Four Dead Queens, which is a pretty popular fantasy that came out last year. Tempe lives in a world mostly covered by water after a cataclysmic flood changed the face of the planet forever. She dives daily for enough money to be able to revive her sister, Alicia, for 24 hours. But the reason she wants to revive her is not to relive some memories, but for answers. Alicia was responsible for their parents' death, and Tempe wants to know why. However, once revived, Alicia doesn't want to spend her last 24 hours in a cold room at a research facility, being accused of a crime she didn't commit. She convinces Tempe to break out, and they set out on a journey to discover the real truth behind their parents' death. Unbeknownst to them, they are pursued by two employees, from the research facility so that they can come back to the facility before their time is up and the secret of revival is revealed. This just sounds a really cool mix of two genres together. Next up on March 3rd is The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu and this is a twist on Mozart. I hope I am saying this right but Nanerl Mozart is a gifted piano player and is sister to the famous Wolfgang Mozart. However, being that is the 18th century, she is regaled to a secondary role to her brother and is basically told that she can only play piano until she is of marriageable age, to which she will be sent off to be married. As Wolfgang's talent grows and begin to eclipse her own, Nenerl, a mysterious stranger from a magical land, comes and offers Nenerl everything that she could wish for, but that wish comes at a deep cost. This is a really interesting mix of history and fantasy, so I'm really looking forward to reading it. On March 9th, we have The Raven and the Dove by Caitlin Davis, which just has such a beautiful cover. And this one comes out March 9th, and on the dawn of her courtship trials, Princess Liana flees for one last adventure in the open skies of her floating kingdom. The last thing she expects to find is a raven prince engaged in a battle to the death with a dragon. Three shocking betrayals, two star-crossed lovers, one unforgettable journey. The next book that I have to talk about is The Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy, which has cover art by Charlie Bowater, and like I love this cover art so much, and I'm so intrigued by this book, and so thank you to Catherine Deacon Books for sending me this arc. I'm really, really looking forward to reading it. And this is going to be a fantasy duology. Comes out March 10th. Bone Criers have a sacred duty to keep the dead from preying on the living. They ferry souls to the afterlife by parnassing the power of bone. However, the sacrifice to the gods for being a bone crier is your one true love. Elise is next in line to be the matriarch of the bone crier clan and must prepare to kill the boy that she is destined to love. Bastion's father was murdered by bone criers and so he sets out on a revenge mission to avenge his father and captures Elise. However, Elise's ritual has begun and so her and Bastion are entangled in a life or death situation. Elise's best friend, Sabine, will do anything that she can to break the bond between the two before they all die. Just like the whole dynamic of this book sounds so cool and I'm instantly captured by the summary and the cover and I really, really want to read this one soon. And the last book coming out in March is Imagine Me by Gerard Moffey, which is the last book in the Shatter Me series. There are a lot of books in this series. It, we originally had the first three books and then now this is the last three books that are coming out. Shatter Me is about Juliet who can kill with a single touch. Because of this, she is locked in an asylum to keep her powers secret within the regime of the reestablishment. However, in this is dystopian world, when they decide that Juliet's powers can be of use, they will try anything to bend her to their will. So yeah, I've been reading the series. I still need to read the fifth book and then this sixth book and it's been a wild journey. <laughs> okay, so now we are moving on to April. The first book to talk about is Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan, which is a sequel to Wicked Saints, which I read in July for the Overhyped Book Club. I will leave our live show linked down below. I really, really did love this book. I ended up giving it five stars, I think. Mm -hmm. So The Wicked Saints is a multi-perspective fantasy set in a Slavic-inspired world. I thought it was Russian-inspired, but it is Slavic-inspired. So don't get that wrong like I did. <laughs> We follow Nadia, who hears the whispers of the gods in her head. A prince who must get married to keep his 
claim on the throne but is surrounded by assassins at every turn and a monster hidden behind pale tortured eyes and a smile that cuts and these three characters become entwined during a centuries long war filled with two opposing magic systems it really is a lot more than it seems from the summary but it is just filled with mystery and intrigue and i really really enjoyed this one and i'm so looking forward to ruthless gods and i think when it comes out the overhyped book club will be talking about the sequel on our live show look forward to that in april the next book coming out in April is The Serpent's Curse, which is the third book in the Last Magician series, which consists of The Last Magician and The Devil's Thief, and then The Serpent's Curse, which is the one that's coming out. In modern day New York, magic is all but extinct. Esta is an esteemed thief whose specialty is magical objects. She has the innate ability to manipulate time and so can go back and steal any magical object that you desire. Her final job is to travel back to 1902 and capture an ancient book that contains the secrets of the Order, a sinister organization that aims to trap every person with magic in New York and bring about the extinction of the mages. This one just sounds really cool and I've heard that it handles time travel very well, which can get very, very sticky very quickly. And I got these two books here from my best friend Melissa for my birthday last year so I am extra looking forward to reading them. Next up is The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman which is a sequel to The Devouring Grey. I read The Devouring Grey last April I think. So in The Devouring Grey we follow four characters who are the heirs to the four founders of Four Paths. Each one has a unique power and they must use it when something is awoken in the forest otherwise known as the devouring gray this book is described as a mix between the raven boys and stranger things and i think that is a pretty accurate representation of it and it's going to be a duology the cover for this second book is stunning and i think it's going to focus more on one of the characters named may so i'm really really looking forward to it. the deck of omens comes out april 21st now we're moving on to may where we have the next book in the hunger games and it's called the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins coming out may 19th and um, that's all we really know so far besides the fact that it's going to take place 64 years before the start of the Hunger Games during the 10th Hunger Games. It's Hunger Games. I'm going to read it. Suzanne Collins has done like nothing since the Hunger Games first came out so I'm really really looking forward to seeing how she's matured as a writer and what direction this prequel story is going to take. Next up on May 5th is Aurora Burning which is the sequel to Aurora Rising. This is a sci-fi series written by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman who wrote the Illuminae series together and it follows basically a crew of boneheads as they set out on their first mission after graduating from a starship academy when they find Aurora Lynn O'Malley who has been in cryosleep for near 200 years and could be the key to a war millions of years in the making. So yes I love Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I haven't read the first book but I am so excited about the second book coming out. Moving on to June. The first book that I'm anticipating in June is Igniting Darkness by Robin LaFerres, which is like a follow-up series to a series I've yet to start, but I did get the first book and that is Grave Mercy. And this is like a trilogy that came out in, the original date was 2012. It's set in 15th century Brittany, where Ismay escapes from the brutality of an arranged marriage and basically she learns that she's been sired by a god of death and will be trained to become an assassin and this is the his fair assassin series i've heard really good things and i have no idea what the following duology even is about because i didn't really look into it because i need to read the original trilogy first but i do hope to get to these books this year and so that's why this book is included on the list and it does have a beautiful beautiful cover next up on june 2nd is where dreams descend by janella angelis this cover just looks so cool this is a book set in a city covered in ice and ruin where a group of magicians will face off to determine who will become the next headliner of the conquering circus however these magicians find themselves under the threat of an unseen danger i mean the cover looks stunning the cover reminds me of moulin rouge and i'm pretty sure in the pitch it's like moulin rouge meets caraval or something like that i am looking forward to it next we have the Dand, which is a sequel to The Beautiful by Renee Audier. This is actually only came out in October, so it's a pretty like short time between books. Typically, it's like about a year in between books, but this is only a few months. The Beautiful is set in 18th century 
New Orleans where we follow Celine Rousseau who has recently came to New Orleans after fleeing Paris after a very deadly incident. She becomes embroiled in the city's underworld, otherwise known as Le Cour des Lions, after catching the eye of the leader Sebastian Saint Germain. However, when one of the bodies of the girls that she is living in the convent with turns up dead in the Court of Lions, Celine begins to question everything. More than that, she begins to uncover dark secrets as the killer turns their eye on Celine herself. This was a really cool series and I can't wait to read the second book and see if we get more of the lore because while it was pitched as like a vampire book, the vampires weren't super prominent in the first book. So I'm hoping that we get more of them in the second. This book comes out in June 9th. Okay, and the last book in this, what I'm sure is a very long video, there are a lot of books to talk about, is Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee. Sersha comes from nothing, but she plans to be something by training to be a spy for the queen. Her plans become unraveled when her best friend is murdered by a group of shamans and Sersha brings her back to life. Sersha is unveiled as the first soul guide in centuries and she's summoned by the spider king to restrain the souls that are restless within the dead wood Whew, okay i need a drink of water after talking about so many books but there are just so so many fantasy releases coming out in the first half of 2020 that i'm really looking forward to getting my hands on and reading there's no shortage of stories that i want to read sometimes it can be overwhelming but you know just take your time reading and doing what you enjoy Please let me know down in the comments below what book you are most forward looking to reading in 2020 and don't forget to like comment and subscribe have some fun read some books i'll catch you guys in the next one